Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over the NACA four digit airfoils. First I'll go through uh, just a general overview of the airfoils and then after that I'll go through a mathematical description of them. Uh, in a subsequent video I'm going to show you how to code up your own program to calculate different uh, data points for these airfoils that you can export as a, as a text file for use in whatever you want to do with it. Uh, so the NACA four digit airfoil uh, is a geometric description of an airfoil and there are two primary variables that describe uh, the geometry of this airfoil. The first is the mean camber line shown in blue and you can see that here. And then the second is the thickness distribution above and below the mean camber line shown in these green dotted lines here. Uh, my picture is not to scale because the upper and the lower on one of these dotted lines should be equal. Uh, C is the cord length of the airfoil. I have a video on cord length that I'll post in the description uh, if you want to take a look at that. And so you'll see in the literature or just in anything that you read that uh, the general formula for the airfoil looks like this. It's a NACA something 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 something. Uh, and you can see that it's either like a 2412 or a 0012 it might be some that you've that you've seen uh, quite often so now let's go through what each of these uh, terms mean so the M is the maximum camber uh, as percentage of the cord so in this case for the 2412 that means that it's uh, two percent so the maximum camber of the airfoil the maximum camber may be like right here for this airfoil that's two percent of the cord length uh, the second term is P, which is the cordwise position of the maximum camber. And that, for this case here, it's P over 10. So this 4, that's not 4%, that's actually 40%. So that means that the maximum camber occurs uh, 4, tenths of the, uh, 4 tenths of the way back from the leading edge of the cord, of the cord length. So in this case here, if the maximum camber is like right about here, it looks like this one might actually be uh, 5 in this, in this P position. And then the XX here, that's one number, so this 12 is one number, it's not 1, 2, it's 12, and that's the maximum section thickness uh, as percentage of the cord, so in this case the 12 here and the 12 here I guess um, means that it uh, has a 12% maximum thickness of the airfoil as a function of the cord length. The first thing we need to do is find the mean camera line, which is defined by the M and the P terms in the four-digit airfoil designation, so in the NPXX des designation. Uh, this is a plot of the mean camber line, so without any of the thickness applied to the airfoil yet. And I'm going to assume a cord length of one length unit, so meter feet, because we can always multiply by a certain cord length later on. So this cord length here is going to be one. The leading edge here is at, located at x equals zero, and the trailing edge is at x equals the cord length, or one. Uh, this P, if you recall from the previous image before, uh, is the location along the cord of the maximum uh, camber. So these are the two equations that specify this blue line here. The top one is used uh, when you're going from the leading edge to point P, and the bottom one is used from point P to the trailing edge. Uh, if, one thing to note is that if you have a symmetric airfoil, so such as like a 0012, the first two numbers, the M and the P, are both zeros. So if you look at these equations here for the uh, Y coordinate, the, if you plug in M is equal to zero here, you'll get a Y coordinate of zero uh, for both of these equations for the entire length of the, of the airfoil, which means that for every X, it'll be, the Y coordinate will be at zero, which means you'll just get a flat line here indicating that there's no camber. So now that we have the mean camber line equations, the next thing we need to do is define the uh, derivative of the mean camber line equations. So if we have these two equations from the previous whiteboard, we just take the derivative with respect to the X coordinate and you get these two expressions. So for the front half, well, front up to P, and then from P to the end of the, the uh, cord. So in this picture over here, this is the mean camber line. I'm going to zoom in on this little portion right here, and this is the green portion here. I'm going to draw, take a point in black and draw a line tangent to it. And for a certain distance that we move in X along the airfoil or along the cord line, we need to move a certain distance Y to get to the next point. And this angle here, theta, is defined as the inverse tangent of this change in the Y coordinate over the change in the X coordinate, uh, which is just this equation here. So the theta you can define as the inverse tangent of this or this equation, depending on where you are on the airfoil. And so the question is, why do you need to do that? Uh, if you take this mean camber line, you need to add some thickness to the airfoil. And I'll go through the thickness distribution on the next whiteboard. Um, 
And you might think, oh, I'll just add it vertically to the point where I'm at. So if I'm at an X point along the, along the airfoil, I'll just add the thickness up and down. But what you actually need to do is you need to add the thickness perpendicular to the main camber line, which is where this theta turn comes into play. So once you know the slope, you can uh, add the thickness uh, perpendicular to this mean camber line. Now that we have the mean camber line, which you can see in blue here, we need to add the thickness distribution to that airfoil here, seen in the dashed green lines. Uh, so this is the equation for the thickness. So y sub t is a thickness distribution. And it's given by this equation that has these coefficients a0, a1, a2, a3, a4 for uh, each of these x terms here. And the x terms are taken into account the distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge. Uh, these coefficients are given down here, and they're defined for a 20% thickness airfoil. And the way that, it, that you can account for the change in thickness uh, given here that you defined for your airfoil is this front term here, which takes into account that xx term. Uh, the one thing to note is that this A4 coefficient here, there's two of them. One of them is for uh, an open trailing edge or a finite thickness trailing edge, and another one is for a sharp trailing edge. It's important to note that this YT is a half thickness in the sense that it's a thickness above and a thickness below. It doesn't take into account the entire thickness. So what you need to do is you need to add this thickness both above the mean camber line, perpendicular to the mean camber line, and below, perpendicular to the mean camber line. So now we have the mean camber line and we also have the thickness distribution of the airfoil so we can now define the overall coordinates of the airfoil that we want to specify. So here we have the mean camber line and here I have the thickness distribution. And what we're trying to find is this particular point, it's a black circle, and I'm calling this one, because this is the upper surface here, I'm calling this XU and YU. For the lower surface, I call it X sub L and, and Y sub L. So if I take this, I'm going to drop a line over perpendicular to the Y axis here, like this, and then you can see it goes down to the, to the point on the mean camber line. So I'm going to blow that up here. You can see that this green line is still the thickness distribution, or Y sub T, and then we have this distance alpha and the distance beta that we're going to need to define where this point is in space based off of the camber line and the thickness distribution. So we remember theta from before, and if we specify this distance as alpha and that says beta, we can say from trigonometric uh, principles that the sine of the theta is equal to the alpha over YT, and beta is equal to the, or cosine of theta is equal to beta over yt. If we rearrange, we get expressions for alpha and beta in terms of yt and theta, which we both know. So we can define points on the upper surface and the lower surface. Looking at the upper surface here, the x of the, at a certain x distance, so we're at a certain x point here, we know that the x point, if it's sloping up like this, the x point, since we have to, since we have to draw the uh, thickness perpendicular to to the mean camber line, it's going to be less than this x point. So we have this x upper is equal to the x point minus the thickness yt times the sine of the theta, like this. And it's a minus sign here, and you might wonder, oh, well, what happens when it's when the uh, the uh, trailing edge when it's sloping down? Well, that is going to be, even though there's a minus sign here, it's going to be taken into account in the sine sign of this sine theta term. In the y upper, we're going to have y of the camber line, so at a certain uh, point here, we're at a certain distance above the zero line, the zero chord line already. So we need to take that y of the camber line, and then we need to add the yt cosine theta, or the beta distance up. And this is always going to be uh, positive, because on the upper surface you're always going to be adding. And then similarly for the lower surface, we have the x sub l and y sub l, and they're similar, but they're just switched with these signs here. And, uh, and they give you the points that are on the bottom uh, or the lower surface of the airfoil there. So the one thing we need to note about these equations here is what happens when we have a symmetric airfoil. So when we have a symmetric airfoil, uh, if you recall from before, the angle theta is going to be zero. So we need to plug in the theta is equal to zero into these expressions and see what we get. And if you do that, you can see that at sine of zero, you get a zero, so this term goes away, which means that all along the airfoil, you, every single x point is at its actual x point, which makes sense if you look at the, this is the camber line of a symmetric airfoil, it's a straight horizontal line, if I've drawn that correctly, and that means that there's no slope, so every single point that you draw, if you take this x point, the thickness is going to be up a certain point at that exact x point, and there's, it's not going to be moved either left or right because of the slope. And now if we plug in 0 to this cosine term, this is a 1, so we have the y camber plus the y thickness. So the y camber, we're at this point because it's a horizontal line, so it's at 0, and we need to add the thickness, and we're just adding the thickness up. 
And so it checks out that these equations work for a symmetric airfoil like a 0012 or whatever you want. I'm going to be going over in the next video about how to program a MATLAB code that will give you uh, an, the airfoil shape based off of what you input. So you can input like a NACA 2412 or a NACA 0012 and it'll give you the coordinates for the airfoil based off of how many grid points you put in there, etc. So thanks for watching.